it is time to completely redo the sound system in this car. I've been loving every single second of driving this car except for the sound system. And this is what I've been using to play my phone. I could probably find a better quality cassette uh, adapter thing, but still it's not gonna sound anywhere near as good as it would if I just do everything correctly and install a brand new Apple CarPlay unit. This guy right here, oh my God, I'm so excited about this head unit. I got the Sony AX5500. Now, I almost got the AX1000 because it has a volume knob, but that one came out in 2018, uh, and I just want something that's newer with, you know, a newer processor. I think this thing came out in 2021. All right, let's do this. Starting off with my trim tool, I'm gonna do the head unit first, or at least I'm going to... Oh, wow, this is loose. This is very loose already. Okay. Now there are going to be two clips. There, that's the clock. That's the hazards. Wow. I just pry this thing out. That was also very easy. Yep. And the reason you had to get that off is because there are two 10 millimeter bolts back there. And there are two up top. Be careful not to lose those bolts down there. Now, unless the internet lied to me, this, wow, that comes out very easily. This is what I'm looking like right now. Already off to a rough start. I had to tip this thing upside down to be able to get one of those clips out. Let's see all the stuff we had to unplug. One clip, that was the easiest one. This one, this is the toughest one to get out. And then there's this guy here. There were also two aux jacks that you had to unplug right there. This thing is beautiful. Wow. So here's where I am right now. It's actually been a couple days since the last clip that you saw. I ended up getting totally stumped on a couple things that I'm going to show you right now. So I drove the car down the street to a friend's house who has an R32 GTR. You guys have not seen him on the channel yet, hopefully sometime soon. And he just didn't play any games. He just like did it, but he showed me, you know, he, he taught me how to do this install. So <laughs> I actually just ripped apart the car. Uh, and then now I'm going to show you guys how to do the rest of this, because what's the point of having a YouTube channel? if I don't do stuff myself. All right, boys. So we have this ready harness here. When you buy a head unit from Crutchfield uh, for I think $25, so it's a flat fee. And this is what mine came like. So they did a bunch of wiring for me and they have these RCA cables coming out, all that good stuff. Um, this is what I got stumped on. Number one, they had this green parking brake wire and they also left a note with the head unit saying that this needs to be hardwired to the car. And then this purple one, which is a reverse reverse light. Okay, this is the one that I would have to properly tap into the car if I was going to be using a backup camera. I thought this, I honestly thought that came with a backup camera when I bought the head unit, but it didn't. Now, Crutchfield included two of these little caps. The reason that the reverse light has one is because we're not using it. So you just cap it off. It's not gonna do anything bad. It's not gonna confuse the head unit or anything like that. Now, why didn't we do that to this one? It has some features like you can mirror your phone screen and you can play YouTube videos, watch Netflix, stuff like, uh, you know, a bunch of things like that. Most head units nowadays, you can hack them and do all of that anyway. But what my friend Corey decided to do with this one instead of cap it off was actually ground it so that the head unit is going to think that this car always has the parking brake on, which will allow me to use all those cool features at any point in time. So if I pull back right here, this is gonna come out. My friend Corey, uh, he pulled this out of his toolbox. I forget what this little circle thing is called. I'm sure someone in the comments will know. And then he uh, just crimped it onto the wire with this little you know, blue thing. And then uh, we just slid it right up under here. There is a bolt hole. So if I wouldn't have taken the car to my friend, I would not have known what to do with those wires. I just 
it was going way over my head. Uh, the next thing, the third wire that I had to do something with was the ground wire. We ended up doing the same thing to the other side. When I bolt back, when I screw back in the head unit assembly, this whole entire thing, there are gonna be two bolts that go in here and there's a metal plate back here, probably aluminum. So both of those wires are grounded. Now the rest of the harness, this white plug right here, this is gonna connect to one thing in the car. The two ones on the bottom, actually, those are gonna be for the air conditioning. So it's gotta be one of these two white plugs. Just put it in here. Oh, that one is a direct fit. Bada bing, bada boom. And now we have to plug in the RCA cables into these little slots right there. So it looks like the front speakers are on the bottom and the rear speakers are on the top. Now I have to Google the universal color codes for these RCA cables and figure out which one is which. Purple left, green right. And for the front speakers, white is left and gray is right. There. Next, we're gonna take this right here. This plug, it's like the master plug. It's gonna go right inside the head unit. I think the last thing going into the head unit is the antenna. So for, you know, your FM radio, AM radio, that's gonna go right in there, the deep one. This USB port one uh, that says smartphone, obviously that is where you connect your USB extension cord for your smartphone. Oh, and there's actually one more thing I almost forgot. This is for the microphone. That is this red one that says mic. It's pretty straightforward. This plug right here um, that did go into the stock stereo, that you're just gonna leave, you're not gonna do anything with that. I literally just had to bribe Vivian to help me film the rest of this video. I was doing something and I was gonna do the back. She wasn't doing anything. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Babe, show me your baby bump. Show him Ellie. Hey. Go back over there. Show them Ellie. Oh yeah. We had an ultrasound on Friday uh, and we were exactly 19 weeks. And uh, our little baby girl, Elena, was, they estimated her at like 11 ounces and in the 82nd percentile. So she's gonna be a pretty big girl. Yay me. Yep. So, um, Crap, I should probably sound more excited because one day she's going to look back and be like, damn, mom. I'm sure she's going to understand. Having a human being coming out of your body is... I'd be scared. All right, let's get back to business. Look at that baby. Whoa, baby, baby, baby. Mole, 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 mole. All right. Babe, come on. Come into my luxury car, babe. <laughs> This is how she looks now. So uh, I, I didn't walk you through putting this on. This is super, super self-explanatory. This is a Metra dash kit and it's it's a piece of crap, dude. It's super flimsy. The better one, which is made by Skosh or Skosh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. That was on back order for quite a, quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to deal with this for now. But I am just getting started on giving this thing an aftermarket sound system, touchscreen, all that sort of stuff. Now there's just four bolts that we need to put back in. Be careful when you're putting these bottom ones in, guys. I actually lost the left one. So there's only one on the bottom now. Who knows where that bolt went? I'm honestly not even gonna worry about it. This is all in now. It's not going anywhere. I mean, I guess we could turn it on and test it right now. Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna make it more suspenseful. <laughs> Cause I already know it works. Or, maybe. <laughs> this thing now, this guy goes right here. I can't see, so I'm just feeling. And this guy. Now, this is super easy to go back in. You just, you just give it a little, a little shove. And the hazards work. Honestly, I think that's it. So down here, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the USB cable yet. I have it just kind of hanging out here. Um, there is a little trim piece that goes in there. 
what I was doing is I was having it come through this tiny little slit right there. Um, and it's, it's just big enough, but it is pinching this cable the tiniest bit. So option A, I could either shave this down a tiny bit to make sure that it freely, uh, so it's not getting pinched down, or I could just like take this whole entire thing apart and figure out some really cool way to, to have this cable up here. I don't know. For right now, this is gonna work just fine for me. Where's that little hole? There. Now, the only part is, you know, this thing won't open. Not that I need my cigarette lighter, I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes, but. What do you think? It's pretty cool. The baby's pretty cool. We're hungry. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Uh, we're also, I'm also gonna check the speakers and make sure that I plug the front RCA cables into the right slots and the rear ones into the right slots too. Cool, this works. Um, yeah, this is, it's really nice. It's a very smooth touchscreen. I'm actually pretty impressed. So I really hope the video is not picking it up, but there is a slight problem when you use the factory amp with an aftermarket head unit in these cars. For some reason, you get this really high-pitched, it's 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 not very loud, but if you focus, you can you can hear it. It sounds like crickets. What do you think it sounds like? I don't even know how to describe it. It's just annoying. Yeah, it's very high-pitched. So I will be doing a stage two upgrade of some sort i don't know very soon but i just wanted to get the you know the apple carplay system working so let's go to the radio make sure the radio works there we go she works and the really cool thing about the volume controls number one all these little things light up and two if you press down on this just for a second it's sensitive so you don't really need a volume knob so if i hold this down for a second it's going to shoot right up look at that you know what i mean it's very responsive. It's not like you have to press it and then wait like a full second or two seconds for it to start dropping volume or going up. So it's fine without the volume knob. It's gonna be super annoying, but I'm gonna put the static up a little bit and we're gonna see if I plug the speakers into the right spots. Okay, balance fader. Oh crap, I think we have something coming from the rear. Yeah, ah, oh, crap, I think I've messed these up again. If I go to the left. I hear it on the it's right. It's on the right side of the freaking car, dude. <laughs> okay. Are you dyslexic too? Honestly, I am not gonna worry about that right this second. It has been so difficult for me to find the time to record this video I'm just gonna frickin' cap it off right here, dude. I'm not tearing that thing apart again. How long, how many days in a row I've been, have I been trying to record this video? Was this like day five? Like a week. Every day there's been something, and I just, this is what you guys are gonna get for this one, I'm sorry. I can definitely recommend the head unit. As far as the whole like high-pitched squealing sound, yeah, Vivian's getting sick of that. All right, well, thank you for, uh, <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. And also thanks again to my friend Corey with the R32 GTR that I hope you guys will see sometime soon. That's all I got. See you in the next one.